Hi, we're doing the MGF for a normal, uh, for exponential. The normal I did yesterday. Okay, MGF. We'll start off as usual with the definition. E to the tx. So I've already stated on the previous page that x is an exponential with parameter lambda. Um, and the way I wrote the PDF. I'll write it later. Okay. Well, for an exponential, exponential is a continuous distribution. So for calculate expectation, we need a continuous sign. We write down this guy. I'll write down the PDF of a, an exponential. Now, the way I've parameterized it, I've used this parameterization. The alternative one is where you do one over this guy, one over this guy. Okay. Both come to the same thing. And since x goes from 0 upwards, we integrate 0 to infinity. So this is what we want. Ah, I've written this bigger than I wish to. I wanted to leave some space. OK. All right, well, let's try to shrink things now. So what do we want? OK, obvious thing is we want to gather these exponential terms together. to the now at this stage I'd write it like this minus lambda minus t x okay comma factor x you see okay and that's dx but my students insist after, I th after at this stage I, I tell my class go on then um, find this integral I'll give you five minutes or so um, and then when I come to go over this thing, they insist I not write it like this because every one of them, I think, have written it like this on the right hand side. So I'm, I'm going to kind of partition this page now. I'm going to just write it how they write it. It's probably the way that you're going to write it. Um, so they do what do they, they got to do? Infinity, zero, lambda, e. What they do? Okay, they do t minus lambda over x. Okay, and then they say, right, Phil, we want to see it done this way, not this way. We want to see it done this way, and we'll see you integrate it. All right. Well, I don't really like integration. Like all my members of my class, probably. But we'll do it. Right. So let's have a look. Um, I'm integrating this thing with respect to x. All right call the rule integrate something like e to the ax dx it's going to be equal to 1 over a e to the ax plus constant of integration so let's apply that here what we're going to have is lambda over t minus lambda and then I've got e to the t minus lambda x I want to evaluate at infinity and zero alright let's just put the infinity sign there okay like that now so we want to calculate this guy here alright um, now if you come straight from high school, you just think, all right, just stick in infinity for x and zero minus, and then stick in zero for x here. But know that this infinity is not an actual number. Now, if this is a math course, you probably won't be allowed to do this. But in a stats course, you probably be allowed just to stick infinity in place of x. Um, but remember, infinity isn't a number. It's just an idea. It's, inf it's just so. What we should do is should be talking about limits. So let me write it as how you kind of actually do this thing. You write it like this. What's the limit? Uh, say r tends instead of calling this guy infinity, you're going to call it r, where r is going to be a very big number. R tends to infinity of e to the t minus lambda r. All right. So instead of substituting infinity, we're just going to call it r minus, and then substitute for x, substitute for zero. Immediately, you can see it's going to be e to the power of zero, which is one. So this is what one. This is what, how it should look. 
and then your argument would be that as mm, this is I'm going to do this in a different color because we've certainly come up on something here that if t minus lambda is negative it's right here if t minus lambda is negative then you're going to have basically as r tends to infinity it's going to be about e to the minus something which is getting very large if I try to, if, in other words the limit here is e to the minus infinity the limit e to the minus infinity is basically is zero isn't it e to a very big number minus a very big number so what we have is that in the limit which is that this is going to be lambda t to the minus lambda and then we write down what the limit of this thing actually is it's going to be zero the limit of a constant is a constant of a constant is just going to be itself minus one and we can rewrite this as saying without the minus sign so I'm switching these two around lambda minus t and the important point to note is that this is only true if t minus lambda is less is less than zero in other words t is less than lambda otherwise you can't do this okay you can see that in if you don't you could kind of re rewrite this if you like it's just a matter of preference dividing top and bottom by lambda you can have 1 over 1 minus t over lambda if you wanted to write it like this same thing right so why do I leave the space in the left column left space in the left column is because I'm going to show you a way now in which you don't have to do integration because I said integration is not one of my favorite things and usually not the favorite things of any students not, at least not of any students I've ever met okay so how I'm going to do this without integration for my next trick here we go I recognize um, this I recognize that an exponential th thing is of the form where can I write it I'll write it let me write it up here in the corner I know that an exponential function is of a form something say a times e to the minus that some same something to the x this is an exponential function so I know that if I integrate this guy here over 0 to infinity it's going to come to 1 because it's just an exponential all right when I said how lam lambda I've just got a's but look at this guy here mm, this guy up here is like my a so if somehow I have not lambda but this guy next to it then I've got I know it's going to integrate to 1 so what am I saying here I'm just let me write it down I'm saying that uh, I'm saying this that lambda minus t that's like my a so the e to the minus lambda minus t why don't I put dx up here right if I integrate this thing it's going to come to 1 with respect to x but this thing first term here is a constant uh, hang on where's my x gone yeah. but this thing here it does not depend on x so it's like comes out of the integration sign so let's put the integral there dx must come to 1 because the integral of the pdf comes to 1 from here but now I've got formula because if I get this and I drag it over to the other side can you see that it's going to be this. Hence, hey presto, I have a formula of an integral without having to do integration. All right. Therefore, could I call this one? I would like to call that one. Therefore, one is equal to. Uh, yeah, I don't even have to do. So this. Uh, let's have a look. Now this only works. that guy there doesn't depend on um, x, so that can 
come out so let's just pull that thing out instead of putting it there let me put it here so I'm saying look this guy here is the same as this guy here which is equal to that so I can say that therefore it's just simply lambda over 1 minus t hang on a minute hang on a minute that's lambda isn't it? Yep. lambda minus t which is what we've got here but in far few steps and as before this integral we could say at this stage that the integral only exists and this is why I wrote with a minus there if I just want to take all this away now let me just create more space you've seen that now oh. Okay, let's see. It's really like a classroom, you can actually see me scrubbing things out. Okay. Um, this is only exist if so the integral finite only if lambda minus t is positive this time because you've got a negative there. You see, that's why I wrote it. There's a negative and a positive, then it's going to be negative. In other words, my curve. It's got over x is going to look like this, it's going to be finite, you can find the area underneath the curve, it's going to be okay. And exactly, you're going to get this thing here. Okay, so um, we can say again for t, for lambda minus t bigger than zero, same as saying for t less than lambda. Done. Alright, both of them. Alright, so that's the MGF done, and um, the next thing is that we're going to use this to calculate the mean and the variance. So the f we need the first moment and the second moment to do that. Let's write down what the MG